Hi everyone, this is Ronnie. I wanted to talk about depression and some of my thoughts that I've been having recently about depression and some other kind of mental and emotional health issues. And personally, I don't suffer from depression. I may have a little bit at one point in my life. I went through a period when I was younger when I felt depressed after I kind of left school. And even before then, I was probably having some negative moments. But my interpretation is that wasn't a kind of clinical depression, but it was to do with the fact that my outer life, my real life, was not really matching my inner goals and dreams and, and plans that I had for my life. And I think that disconnect was what fueled a lot of what I felt as a kind of depression. And I would get down sometimes and just feel disconnected, alienated, you know, have, have moments like that. I took various actions at that time, particularly I gave, I get, actually gave up sugar. I started to meditate. I started to change my diet. I did a bunch of things like that. And meditation in particular seemed to recalibrate, rebalance, um, reconfigure in some way my brain and how it was operating and brought up my general emotional well-being feeling to a higher level and I think also with doing that it also brought me in more alignment with my reality where I was that the things that I was wanting to be in my head were not necessarily important and I felt some relief and um, I've not ever since then I've never really felt depressed apart from um, a couple of times with sugar. So sugar was something that was seemed to be triggering some feelings, especially of alienation, uh, whether that's real depression or not. But it was like a real disconnection, alienation, can't connect with anyone, that kind of feeling, which I think is common to people that suffer from depression. And, uh, and at times when I was under eating on a raw vegan diet, especially when I started off and a few other times, if I under ate for a long period of time, but I mean really severely under ate, especially as a beginner, for two or three days, I would wake up, not want to do anything, just be like, have no energy, just want to do nothing, get really negative about everything. And sometimes I've realized that just by eating more, that can go away, you know? So I've experienced those kind of things. I made some adjustments and uh, improved things. And, but I've been thinking about depression and about some of the negative emotional states. And the way that I look at a lot of health issues and things that the body does, so depression and these kind of negative emotions, all of the emotions that we have have a purpose, I believe. And they are there to be expressed in some way or other. They, they either act as a message to us, but they might also be a message to others. And I always try and imagine, with everything that's going on in our body and everything that's going on in our mind, I, I imagine there's a purpose and I imagine if we go back to the human body, the human being evolving over long periods of time, that all of these things, these instincts, these emotions, these reactions that we have served purposes that were so important that they remained a part of us and they remained a part of the humans that successfully lived, survived and procreated, which is the lineage that we all come from. We come from the successful group. So these things should be for our advantage, including depression, any kind of negative emotions that come out. 
the difference would be people that have, you know, maybe from an accident, head injury, their brain is not working right and, and things like that. So let's look at this a little bit. The first thing I would say, human beings are designed to live in groups. We cannot survive alone. No man is an island, they say, but we just can't survive alone. I mean, it's maybe possible for someone to be um, like living on a desert island and stuff like that. But it's very dangerous. It's very risky. Very few people do that without connections to the outside world. Either for food, for additional food supplies, medical help, um, equipment, metals, uh, medicines, fuel sources. You know, there's very few people that live isolated on their own, away from everyone else, without any um, support from the outside world. So not only do we need the support of other people that create and make and do things and build things and all that, not only do we need that sort of thing, um, we need community. We crave people. We crave others, I believe. And we are best off with others. And by the way, a lot of people that live isolated, they still, for example, listen to the radio, watch television, read books. They still engage in some way with others, even if it's not in the form of real life conversation. Thinking about all this, I imagined, what would it be like if you were living in a tribe hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, tens of thousands of years ago, in a tribe, in in a more natural setting, and you were experiencing depression, what would happen? First off, you might say, well, maybe depression couldn't happen because maybe an aspect of depression is the level of comfort that we experience. That people are able to sit around and dwell on things and and be isolated and all that stuff and that that wouldn't have happened back in the day that people would have got up had to go and collect food had to go and collect i don't know firewood or wood for like making things or had to make things make clothing who knows all that kind of stuff that people were doing and then they're just surrounded by people all the time their friends their family always talking but the emotion is real and it, it's, it, it's not just the emotion on the inside, it's what it presents on the outside. And that's something that I, I, I believe is the case with some of these emotions, is that it's not just about making you feel a particular way, which is one of the functions of it. It has a function. It's also about projecting to others your state and therefore stimulating action in others. So emotions, we talk about energy and motion. And for you personally, feeling depression is, um, you know, you know, negative feeling. But that will represent itself in your posture and how you look and how you act and how you talk and everything. And others will be able to pick up on that and see that. The difference with the modern world is that we're no longer surrounded by others. People can live on their own. I live on my own. People can live completely isolated, spend whole days, weeks on their own. Or they can spend days, weeks surrounded by people that maybe don't care for them that much. At jobs and things where they're not really valued that much or no one's really interested in them. And they're hiding away and people are hiding this. But my question, I guess, or my inquiry into this is, what depression and negative emotions to some extent are about is that the fact that it would stimulate others around you, or it should, to come to your support, to come to your aid, to come and ask what's going on. And what we have 
is a, is a pretty bad system where people get depressed and they can sign off, they can quit their job or they can go off sick and then go and on the, live on their own and get social security and be more and more on their own away from other people and get more and more depressed and never really get out of the cycle of it. And I think that's one of the problems with a lot of these things is that what we really need is people around us. That's a big source of what will help. And not just people around us that are kind of vaguely kind of around, but people that genuinely um, care about us, are interested in us. And... are aware of what we're going through, you know, and are looking to sort of help. And the depression maybe wouldn't last long in that context, in a context of being in a within a tribe, that it just couldn't last that long. That you would get support, that you would get that people would connect with you, but maybe that's not the case, I don't know. Depression also seems to be an aspect of, or some people claim it's an aspect of grief, and there's a author called Elizabeth Kubler-Ross who had a book called On Death and Dying, which I don't know if that's been scientifically verified, but it has a model of the stages of emotion that people go through when someone dies, when they experience grief. And it seems like those emotions, it's not just about someone dying, it could be about anything ending, a job, a relationship, a particular, a friendship, um, a political party not being voted for or something, or, you know, a president leaving or whatever, you know. Whatever these kind of grief that people feel when things change in a way that they don't want it to, in an extreme way. And then the model of the emotions that people would go through would be something like denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So someone dies... Um, they get told the person dies, the reaction is, you know, shut up, don't tell me that. Don't, like, I don't need to hear that. You know, denial. And maybe it's not, maybe it's not anger next, maybe it's something else. But then they might have anger against, you know, the person that's told them that, just irrationally. Uh, so they might experience anger, bargaining which is sort of like praying to god please bring them back i'll be a good person or some form of bargaining doctor or whatever i'll do anything if you can bring them back and then going into depression and i guess that's that's the question is whether a lot of people with depression is that they're just stuck in the depression that comes from the grief of a particular moment in their life that they've yet to accept and whether that's deep down an issue with a lot of people with depression i also think that depression can come simply by being at the bottom of a particular social hierarchy as far as i've learned and that's something that we don't consider that you know the poorest of society the worst off um, there's people that really struggle and under stress a lot that often they're more likely to uh, suffer from forms of depression and just generally a lower mood and more likely to have you know and you can see that kind of difference of like wealthier people how much more relaxed they sometimes are <laughs> 
or sometimes seen than others, you know. Um, just because there's less stress in their life. So, and, and I do think there's a depression that comes from having the kind of thing that I sort of felt like I maybe experienced, which was having particular goals and not really working towards them or not really effectively moving towards them. And the confusion that surrounds that, you know, and the disconnection between what you want and what you actually are or what you actually have and things and the disconnection from reality there. So I don't know, but I, I mean, I, I, I just, a lot of these things I think to myself, you know, it's not about medicating these things away, which I think is pretty terrible. I think the diet is for some people going to make a big impact. I don't think it makes all the impact, but I think diet is a big factor. I think giving up alcohol is a big factor. I think removing drugs is a huge factor. So anyone that's saying that it's depressed, but they're still taking drugs and alcohol and other mind bending, altering substances. That's probably the first thing that they need to do. Um, exercise and things like that. Friendship, getting more around people, getting part of a community, getting a purpose and a meaning in life. It's a very important thing for people to have meaning and purpose and something to do. And to me, probably if it, the number one thing would be meditation. And it's probably not what a lot of people want to hear, but I really think it's that practice. And then people will say, well, what kind of meditation? Well, just sitting... You just have to sit with your eyes closed and it happens. Like people think that meditation is something you do. It's a natural state that happens if you sit and close your eyes and sit still long enough. That's that's it. Meditation will happen. And it's not cycling or running. Before anyone says, my, my meditation is cycling. It's also not visualization. If you go to a class and a person tells you, you lie on the floor in a blanket and they take you through a visualization. That's not meditation. Meditation, that's not the state of meditation. So, but meditation does just happen naturally. So I think it is the most powerful one of all those things, to be honest. Um, but any of those things can help. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. I mean, I, I really genuinely think that when people that there are reasons for the body doing these things. They're, the body's reacting in a certain way. It's trying to trigger you to do something different. It's making you uncomfortable so that you change or the people around you are signaled to change or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you for watching as ever. Feel free to subscribe and share and comment below. Thank you.